Welcome back. Art and faith, what do they have in common? Let's sit down and talk to Hafsa Gizer, graphic designer, digital artist, and photographer. Welcome to the show, Hafsa. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about art. How did you get involved? Was it sort of a childhood uh, you know, passion that you wanted to pursue from when you were super young, or was it something that you, know, you developed later on? Um, so I used to do like painting and artwork and this sort of stuff when I was younger. Um, and then like, I think I stopped like at age seven or whatever. And then I didn't do anything until I think 22 or 23, which is when I picked up a brush again. And was it during that time, was it something that you just like forgot about? And then at 23, it was just, you just picked it up again or? I don't think it was like important because like, um, the reason I picked it up when I was 22, 23 was because I, I needed a place to process the things that were happening in my life. But between like seven and 22, I just filled that space with like internal dialogue and just being on my own and mm -hmm. being by myself. But I didn't think that it was important to express any of that stuff. So yeah. And did you feel like the whole notion of, you know, that it's not important to express yourself and, and things along those lines, do you think that's something that um, what was an idea that was sort of reinforced in society a lot of the times or, and that's sort of why you maybe you felt like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna suppress this idea kind of thing? No, I think part of it is my personality. I am, <clears throat> I'm a very private person um, and I don't, I didn't really have anybody to talk to those things, mm -hmm. uh, talk to about those things. Um, so yeah, I think I just internalized a lot of them and I didn't know the importance. Like I don't think I ever learned the importance of like expressing myself mm -hmm. in any way at all. Um, so let's talk about these things because we're talking in abstracts. What were some of those things, um, what were some of those challenges that you were going through? You don't have to go into detail, but sort of generally just so we get a sense. Some of the challenges I went through between seven and 23? Yeah, and then at what, what triggered you to pick up the paintbrush at 23 and sort of use that as an outlet? Um, so I didn't know that I was like using it as an outlet. Mm -hmm. um, I think I just, like I said, like I needed a space where I could um, process these sorts of things that I was dealing with. Um, a lot of it was um, just dealing with a lot of things in my personal life. <clears throat> at the time I was like unemployed and I had just finished school. I had just moved a, to a different city. Um, uh, there was huge changes in my family and then I lost some people that um, were very special to me. So there were a couple layers of things that I was dealing with. Um, and up until then I had just dealt with them myself or within myself or just, you know, being patient and um, these sorts of things. But I, I think eventually like it erupted because that's not healthy. Mm -hmm. Like you need to talk to people and you need support around you. Um, and it's okay to like have support with people. I just didn't know that. I thought that, you know, the only support that you're supposed to seek is um, like with Allah, which is true. Um, but I think for me, um, by merit of my personality and the way I grew up, I think I just kept everything within myself and um, I still tend to do that. But I eventually like, um, there were things in my life that really forced me to sort of um, get out of that and um, I, I traveled and, and learned about Islam and tried to figure out like um, some of the answers to these questions that I had about, you know, faith in Allah and, you know, why I was struggling with the things I was struggling with and why um, these sorts of like existential questions, like why do bad things happen to mm -hmm. good people and why is there so much pain in the world? Why are, why are people suffering? And um, within my life, um, why are these things happening? And so when I came back from that study, I started uh, like literally like life was very still and it was like, like I said, I was unemployed, all these sorts of things. So I needed a place to do that and there wasn't anyone around me to talk to. So that's when I picked up a paintbrush and it was usually like at night, like when I can't sleep, like I have to do something. I have to remind myself of all these things that I learned in um, studying Islam and studying what Allah really says about himself and reminding myself of those things that he said he is. and. Um, that's when I started painting the Reminders series. So talk to me a little bit about, um, you talked about this notion that when you were struggling through things, uh, Islam is about, you know, being patient. 
And I think some of the verses that you pick in your paintings reflect that. So was that sort of conscious effort on your part um, to illustrate that? And was that a way that you were dealing with, with some of these struggles through your artwork? Um, I think, I think people, when they look at my artwork, that's what they pick up because that's the first thing you can see. Um, they remind I'm also going to say, like, when I Googled, like, the image that comes to mind when I think of you is the sea and, like, a verse from the Quran and just very <laughs> nice, calming images. Like, that's what comes to mind. Yeah. I think most people are familiar with my work because it's, like, in that realm. It's all... Um, you know, these bright, beautiful colors and these scenic, like, the scenic imagery and, um, you know, s pink trees and, and, and blue and these really, like, calming things with uh, verses in the Qur'an that were really healing to me because um, when I was in, these, when this, in this space, I literally could not express uh, some of the pain that I was going through. Like, there's no way sometimes to, like, explain that to people, what you're dealing with. And so the only way that I understood how to deal with it was by turning to the Qur'an and turning to, you know, these promises that Allah has made that, you know, the, the patience of the patient will not, you know, go to waste or that the, the trials that you're dealing with, that Allah is, you know, seeing them and that He will, you know, reward you in, in Jannah for the pain that you're going through in this life and that if you can't tell people what you're going through, Allah knows what's in your heart before you've even said it to anybody. Mm -hmm. So those are like the, that's like the messaging that was um, that I needed to be reminded of, and so I would paint that. And um, I actually didn't share it with anybody. Someone just saw it and put it on online, one of my friends, and then it literally like overnight, a lot of people just saw it and they were like, "Where can I buy this?" Mm -hmm. And so like that's when the reminder series, um, like I started an online shop and like people started buying my work. But yeah, a lot of it was just this really like bright, beautiful imagery of like having hope in Allah. Um, now talk to me about, you know, that's often what we're taught. We're taught to have hope in Allah and you constantly try and believe that. But I know now your work is shifting away from the reminder series to other kind of artwork. So talk to me a little bit about what, what triggered that shift and, and, and why you're heading down that path. So like I said, a lot of that work, um, a lot of that work was uh, really hopeful and really bright and, and beautiful, but um, I think underneath that there was a lot of pain and I was masking it through this like um, really rosy image of beautiful like uh, scenes and um, promises of Allah and this sort of stuff, but that wasn't helping me work through any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I was just sitting there in a lot of pain and going, okay, Allah is going to reward me for this. And I think that was, um, it was really hard to go through like a number of years like that. Like I feel like a decade of my life went by doing that. And it's like um, you just kept painting these things, but in your heart you were still struggling a lot, but you kept producing it. Yeah, because I felt like at the time I needed that. I needed to be reminded of that. And that was literally the only thing I could do. Like I had tried other things, but sometimes you're in a situation in life where you can't do anything. You've done your utmost best and then you can't do any more to change your situation. That's when you say, you know what? I have faith in Allah. I have believed in him. I've stayed away from everything that he's asked me to stay away from. I have hope in him that he's going to take me out of this situation. But sometimes that doesn't happen. Like you don't get out of that situation. And then you're wondering like, I did everything right. Like, why am I still in all of this pain? And I think that's when my, like, that's when my artwork shifted a little bit because I'm now trying to create more honest art and more genuine art, and that's what I'm feeling. And um, a lot of it is, it's a little darker than those images that people are so, you know, comfortable seeing. seeing and so used to seeing. And uh, I think a lot of it touches on, like, spiritual wounding and just... Um, you know, what role do we take like between like having faith and doing your part? Like wh what like what role do I play in that small space of like having faith and doing my part? Like what can I do? And often in that small space, you're being given so much advice on what you're supposed to do and who you're supposed to be as a Muslim and especially as a Muslim woman and Islam is often used to tell you what you're supposed to do. And sometimes you can't make that jump between like my actions and having faith. Like you can't make that jump. and that little space is called like being patient, but it's, it doesn't have to be like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the art I'm making now is just exploring that 
not necessarily like for other people to see, but just for me, like what do I really think about this? Just talked about it. You talked about spiritual wounding. So talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, it's an interesting idea, but I don't think, what do you mean by spiritual wounding? Like if you can share some examples about, um, you know, when we think of Islam and we think of Muslims, you don't necessarily hear this idea about being spiritually wounded. So what does that look like? What does that mean? What does that mean for you? It's like a really big topic to go into. Um, and I think a lot of people, like I feel like only some, or maybe, I don't know, I feel like some people will resonate with this and a lot of people won't. And I think that's like the problem mm -hmm. that I'm having right now is like anytime I say spiritual wounding, people are like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Like they don't understand it. Um, and I think like often a lot of people have the privilege of not understanding it because they've had the privilege of not experiencing it. But I think just the way that you can be wounded by what people say and by things that happen to you or things that happen in your life, you can also be wounded by Islam or the way that Islam has been weaponized against you. And for everyone I feel like that's experienced that is gonna, is gonna have like a different definition for it. But for me, I feel like my entire life was revolving around having faith in this God that loves me and as long as I keep him as my priority, nothing else matters. Like mm -hmm. I can do anything, I can overcome any pain, I can do like, Allah is with me. Like I, there's nothing that can hurt me. And the minute that someone got into that space and messed it up for me, it really ruined like my, uh, my belief. Give me and an example. Give me an example of that. You I don't have to share a personal example, but a general example um, about what do you mean when someone comes into that space? What's an example of that? When you say Islam is uh, weaponized against people or used against us, what is? Give me like a practical example of that. Um, so I think, like I was saying, um, for me, like that that space was very sacred. That relationship with God was mm -hmm. very sacred, and so the way that. I relate to God and the way that I operate in my life is with that mindset. But um, I think the way that Islam is taught, and there, there's like a problem with the way that Islam is taught, um, because it's taught from like this binary like lens, and it's often like, and has historically been taught through um, a male lens. Mm -hmm. And so all these voices are like not present. There's no representation or there's, alhamdulillah now like, we're, we're getting to a place where there's, there are more diverse voices. There are voices of um, women, there are voices of um, minorities, and there are voices of people that are maybe like uh, Muslim but also have accessibility needs or Muslim and also identify as LGBTQ or Muslim and identify as all these other things. So there's all these other voices now. And so I feel like it's really great that people are able to see their religion from these other lenses. but. I think for me and the generation that I grew up in and, and you know, people before me as well, Islam was literally taught through just one male lens. Mm -hmm. And often in that process, um, people can interpret Islam in a way that benefits them. And they might just be understanding it that way and that's all right, but that doesn't take away from the fact that it hurts other people. And so an example of that is, um, the way that Islam is weaponized against women. And so you might think that you have this great relationship with Allah and you might be praying all night and you might, you know, be, you might, you might be staying away from all these things that are easily haram and easily accessible for you. Why? Because you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then someone comes to you and they say, you know what, you have like one centimeter of your wrist showing. Your another Why are you to wear a headscarf? And yeah, the hijab is like a big thing too, but like you're, you're not Muslim enough, you're not, um, you're not Muslim enough, nothing that you do is valuable. Like I feel like a lot of the time a woman's worth is like completely taken away from her, even though she's, she believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she might be like way more invested in her religion than you are but you have the, the privilege and the authority as maybe someone standing up um, to give a khutbah or um, as a male or someone with more power in society mm -hmm. to be able to say this is right and this is wrong, so therefore everything that you've done is wrong and you're not worth anything and here's the Quran to prove it. And at that point you feel like you can't fight it because that must be what Allah is saying, but it's not true. And so 
doing that research and like trying to figure that out is a really hard process and it hurts a lot because you're like trying to figure out well my relationship with Allah has got me through all of this and now like now I can't even talk to Allah because Allah must think I'm worthless right and not because you've sinned or anything but because people are taking Islam taking hadith taking the Quran putting their own spin on it and taking you can't context, fight it yeah right and even if you look at the context people will be like okay look at the context this is what it means but that's your opinion right and that context was like in a historical context that may have been revealed it was a different cultural context it was a different time like we're living in a very different time now with very different issues than previously and we have to literally look at Islam very critically and think about it very critically and not let what XYZ person or XYZ male leader has said and hurt us and now we can't practice our religion because that sacred relationship has been taken away. And I guess that in and of itself is also a journey, right? Like unlearning the things that previously you thought people were like, okay, this is what Islam is and therefore you have to do it. So not only now are you struggling with rebuilding that relationship, but now you're also struggling with unlearning all of that and sort of differentiating, okay, this was people and this is what Islam says, now I need to first figure that out and then work through this. And so you've basically defined just now spiritual wounding. Yeah. Like I was so. talking to you and earlier and I was saying that sometimes I can't like even go to a khutbah because going to a khutbah is a triggering experience or I yeah. can't open up a book and study Islam in the traditional way that you think people study Islam. They go overseas or they go to an, they go to a religious class or yeah. they go somewhere. I can't go to those places because it hurts so much to hear some of these things and so there's I have to do the sifting. I have to figure out what Islam really means but I also have to deal with the emotions and the wounding of that it's not an easy process the mm -hmm. same way if someone hurts you you can't just rebuild a relationship with them without dealing with all those emotions involved and I don't think people understand that very much yeah. like let's go to the khutbah let's go to the the Islamic class let's go to the halaqa and I'm sitting there going how do I explain to this person that it's gonna hurt me to go to that class yeah like it's very hard I don't have like the answers to all these questions, but yep. finding the answer is also like very difficult. And I think that's where my art comes into play a lot for me. So let's talk a little bit. So I, I'm hoping now we're going to talk like the art um, is a form of healing for you in some way to sort of work through some of these things. So talk to me about how you use art um, as a form of healing to deal with what I would classify are like a whole amount, layers and layers of challenges. And, you know, I know you said I don't think people can resonate, but fortunately or unfortunately, I think this is an issue that a lot of people deal with, but nobody talks about it, right? So I think it's great that you came on to talk about it. So thank you for that. But let's talk about um, how you use the artwork as a form of healing. I always like think it's funny when people say that to me because like, I never thought of it as like, oh, I'm healing through this. Like, oh no, and I don't, I don't mean it <laughs> like I, know, I don't I mean it like that either. But I can see how it comes off as that. But just I mean, how do you use art to sort of work through some of these things? And yeah. you know, I'm guessing like you'll paint and then you'll go away and maybe you'll feel a little bit like kind of like pe like I like to write sometimes to let my like let everything that I have going on out. Um, and after that, it's sort of a cathartic process, right? Because you feel like okay, I've let it out. Is that kind of what art is for you? Um, or painting rather yeah um, I think a couple things firstly I don't ever think of it as like oh I'm gonna heal myself with this or this is gonna be uh, a, a great experience for me I feel like sometimes I'm pushed into this space because there's no other choice I would love to sit down and talk to somebody that really gets it and be able to like get through things the way normal people get through things mm -hmm. they talk and they connect with people but I feel it constantly disconnected from people and uh, you know again it might be um, the fact that I'm a private person it might be the fact that I'm introverted it might be the fact that I'm a sensitive person it might be any of those things but I think at the end of the day I can't connect with people on some of these things that really matter to me and so I'm pushed into this space where I have to do something about it mm -hmm. otherwise I end up getting very depressed or lost in my mind or um, very anxious and I'm like I can't sleep for days and days and I'm like okay you have to do something so like that's where I go and I'm like okay don't paint pretty trees because that's not that's mm -hmm. not the truth for you right now the truth for you right now is where is God and why is my why am I suffering 
And so I have to create something that really means something to me, whether it looks nice at the end of the day, whether it looks pretty, whether someone likes it, like none of that matters to me. I need a safe space where I can be me and I can fully express that stuff to myself. And then once I've done it, I feel like, um, I feel like I've done something honest for myself that other people can't give me. And I have to give that to myself. I have to take care of myself and do that, do that art there. And so now that I have like maybe 14 pieces of art that I've created just for me, I've only shared like three of them online. Mm -hmm. Those, those pieces are really truthful to me. They're my truth. And a lot of people won't understand them. When they look at them, they might just be like, what in the world is that? But to me, it's like working through a lot of this stuff. And yeah, I guess at the end of the day, it does provide something healing, but it's not this easy thing that I can go to and be like, you know what, I'm feeling this pain. I'm gonna heal myself. Let's paint yeah. it out. Like, mm -hmm. it's a really painful process. And at the end of it, I'm like, okay, I kind of understand it a little better. I might not, but this is a journey and that's just how it's gonna be. I think I just wanna, um, I know we need to wrap up, but just one point, er, earlier when we were speaking, you talked about how, you know, when you were doing the reminder series, you felt at one point that you, it wasn't healthy for you. So I just wanna talk a little bit about that because we don't often acknowledge, um, you know, because technically that's work for you. That's your career, right? And you chose to take a step back from it, not that you're completely away from it, but you chose to shift it because you, you honestly admit it to yourself that this is not healthy for me. So talk to me a little bit about that. Um, so with the reminder series, um, I was creating artwork at the time that really solidified my relationship with Allah and really made me think like, Hafsa, you have to be at the level of Maryam alayhi salam and Asiya and Yusuf and Yunus and Ibrahim and these people in the Quran that you love and you've, their conviction through all of this pain that they went through is what's, you need to remember this stuff. So creating that kind of work at that time was honest mm -hmm. for me in that moment and for everyone that has it or has bought my art and has it like in their living room or whatever and they look at it and they're like you know what husband a lot today i've i've dealt with some like horrendous stuff today but i can look at this painting and be like jenna's waiting for me i've got to be patient that makes sense for me it may not be healthy to do that now. I still do make that kind of art. I haven't like changed it or yeah. completely like thrown it away. I do make that kind of art if that's what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. But I also make space for all the other emotions and feelings that people are not comfortable talking about and I'm not comfortable talking about. That's why I'm painting them. I do make space for that as well. But I think it's unhealthy to pretend that you're, you've got this like unbreakable faith Whereas when you do have that strong like faith, Allah is going to test you in that faith. And to pretend that you're sitting and, and, and not feeling any of that pain is, is not healthy. And I think, you know, having faith is great, but you also have to do your part. Mm -hmm. And doing your part is working through all of that stuff. And if that's spiritual wounding, then, you know, figure it out. And if it's not, if it's other stuff, then, you know, you have to work through that stuff. Um, just as we wrap up, I know we talked about a lot of things. So what are you hoping our viewers take away uh, from this conversation? If there's one takeaway you want them to leave with, what would it be? Um, everyone always says, like, you're not alone. And I feel like it's so cliche. And I'm not going to say it because I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. I do think at the end of the day, you are alone sometimes. And in those times, you have this opportunity to really figure out what's going on with you. And in my alone times, where I've literally, utterly felt like there's no one on this planet that understands, I went to Allah, and it helped a lot. But sometimes it didn't help. And in those times, you have to figure out what is going on. You can't just lose your faith entirely. You really have to work on it. And sometimes, if it's not working and you're not finding peace in that space, you're praying Kiyamalei, but you're not finding peace, there might be something else going on. And if it's spiritual wounding, like I'm on this path right now, so I don't have all the answers, but all I can say is um, you have to do your own research. Like you don't owe anyone an explanation for your spirituality. You don't owe anyone an explanation for your belief or your religion. You have to research it on your own. You have to talk to women. You have to talk to anyone in your community and you have to like build your Islam in a way that's authentic to you because you will be alone <laughs> and you have to like figure out how to do this um, this life thing on your own. 
Well, I think that's really honest, uh, true, and, and valuable advice. Um, thank you for having such an open conversation. I'm sure a lot of people will be able to resonate. Um, I know I did, and um, you know I'm sure people will benefit. So thank you so much for taking the time to come on and, and talk about your journey. I know it's not easy, but I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.